Redditors who clean up crime scenes. What's the most bizarre thing you've witnessed? I don't clean up crime scenes. But I do remove the deceased. I can get into more accurate detail of the deceased but. Here's some general stuff. Hoarders are a lot more common than they really should be. First of all. And it's never a clean hoard. It's piles of junk covered in several types of urine. It and vomit. Molds I've never seen before. And probably insects that haven't even been discovered yet. I understand when the emergency services don't want to be in that kind of house longer than they have to. But I'll never forget having to ask them to help me because I couldn't distinguish what was actually the deceased. And what was just a piles of random and that looked more human than the deceased did. People will warn you bodies will bloat. And touching them the wrong way will make them leak. But the image you're conjuring up doesn't even hold a light to what it can be like. Insects skittering when you delicately lift a 400 pounds deceased onto your cot. Because one wrong move and they will start oozing. Oh. And the ones who had pets who were so desperate they had to eat their owner. Staring into the eyes of a big. Brown eyed mutt who is happy to finally receive human contact. And all you can't think about is how the deceased is missing their entire face. Poor things were just hungry. But it's unsettling. Crime scene cleaner here. My first suicide cleanup was quite an experience. Man shot himself in the head in his garage. I'll never forget needing to use pliers to pull teeth and skull fragments out of the drywall behind where he sat. All that blood and brain managed to make its way more than 50 feet across the garage. Most disturbing though, was his pickup. We chose to take it to our company wash bay to pressure wash it and make sure it was as clean as possible. I cleaned it myself and was satisfied that I had done well. Inspected for blood and couldn't find anything. So I began driving it back to the owner's garage. On the way back a slight drizzle began and switched on the wiper blades. Imagine my horror as a chunk of brain streaks across my newly cleaned windshield. I pulled over quickly and cleaned it up. But it still makes me sick to think what would have happened if it didn't rain that day. This man's poor wife or daughter would have been met with that sight and been crushed again by the impact of suicide. That 10 years ago and I'll never forget it. Now I triple or quadruple check every job. Was dispatched to a vehicle versus pedestrian call a couple months ago. And when we arrived on scene it was like something out of a movie. Dude was running across a fairly busy 4 lane road and was hit by a car traveling about 55 miles per hour. After his head went through the windshield of the first vehicle he then proceeded to be thrown into the opposite lane and was ran over and drug about 20 yards by another vehicle. Once the coroner was on scene with traffic investigations we proceeded to pick up his organs bit by bit. It was a fantastic anatomy lesson. I occasionally work on the weekends for a funeral home. It's decent money for what is essentially 2 hours of call out work when their normal staff is off. Last year I was called in at around 5 in the morning. A 30 something year old guy had killed himself, shot himself, in a pretty small 2 bedroom apartment. That wasn't the bizarre part at all since I've seen it before on callouts. What was bizarre was what was in the apartment. Literally thousands of documents. Piled on the floor. On a desk. On shelves. Of people's financial information. Credit card statements. Bank statements. Personal data. ETC. Probably 3000 folders with all this stuff in it. Even where there weren't piles of folders. There were just loose papers. Magnetic cards surveillance cameras it was just the weirdest thing i've ever seen and of course some of these documents and folders had blood and brains spattered all over them didn't matter to me though since the detective on scene had said it was fine to take the body the police had to clear a path by collecting the papers from the route we would take from the door to the apartment to where he was a couple of months later it came out that the guy had over a million dollars in cash and bitcoin apparently the state police were onto him family member did heavy duty cleaning including crime scenes. A guy shot his head off with a shotgun. EMTs were supposed to pick him up. Literally. But missed a large chunk of brain behind a couch. That was when said family member decided to find other engagement. My best friend used to have this job. Most of the bizarre stuff was cleaning up suicides. Found a guy's full intact mustache across the room when he blew his head off with a shotgun. One guy tried to kill himself by shooting his stomach with a small caliber pistol. He didn't die immediately so he wrote tons of whacked out stuff on the walls with his blood. Then finished the job. 
My job is to clear landmines. I clean war crimes. You can say, yay. Bit of a stretch. I know. Recently a cow had walked into a minefield in our area of operations and stepped on a small anti-personnel mine. However, this mine was boosted by having been buried on top of a directional fragmentation mine. Gamers and soldiers. Think Claymore. But but bigger. A cow had literally been split in half. With cow intestines spread all over the area and hanging from trees like Hannibal's Christmas ornaments. Edit. Love the puns less than three. Okay. Not a crime scene cleaner but I'm a medic. Have a few bizarre ones. Came into a home to find a man who had attempted to commit suicide by putting a pistol under his jaw but failed had a second thought. He ended up having to crawl 5 feet away to where he had thrown the pistol after only blowing the left side of his face off to finish the job. The second one did the trick. Just about every surface in his living room had some remnant of the poor guy. He left behind two kids. Another time we had a husband who had caught his wife cheating and had turned on the garbage disposal and forced her arm down it. Massive hemorrhaging. But unfortunately she was DOA. Husband ended up with a self-inflicted shotgun wound. Sah. People really don't understand just how messy a shotgun can make things. Think the Hulk smashing a blood and brain filled pinata. And this one was more weird than anything but here goes. Older gentleman we were called to after police performed a wellness check late 70s. Nice house. Nice foreign car in the driveway. Pictures of prayers and crosses all over the house. We had into the bedroom and there he is naked except for what I assume was one of those sexy nun Halloween costumes. Honestly I don't know but he ended up having a heart attack mid pleasure time while choking himself with a rosary. Definitely one of the weirdest things I ever saw during my time working the box. I've got a ton. I used to do CSI work and was an autopsy tech. So I would both go to the scene, investigate, bring the body back to the morgue, and help with the autopsy. Anyways, this person murdered their spouse, and stuffed the body into a fridge, and buried it in the woods. When you have a body exposed to the elements, you have normal decomposition to look forward to, such as insects, bloating gases, skin coming off, bones showing, etc. Once you've seen a few, then you know that this kind of decomp state of body is normal and you know what to expect. There are varying levels of stuff you deal with, but it's all within an expected spectrum of the job. Hope that makes sense. However, in this case, this person was sealed in, so you didn't have any of that. They were essentially stewing in there for almost a year, might have been longer. I don't remember the exact time. I wasn't there on scene when they found the person, only in the morgue, to help with the autopsy. So I prep the room. Doctor comes in. And I pull out the body from the fridge and wheel them into where we do the actual autopsy. Opened the bag. And oh my god. The smell. I'll never, ever forget the smell. I've dealt with bodies in various stages of death and decomposition. But holy it. This was on 10 other levels. Now the morgue has HVAC. Air filters fresheners. And all that. But they weren't effective at all for the smell. It was so bad I gagged which I've never done before, and almost threw up in my mask. The doctor was struggling too. The doc double backed and almost looked like they were gonna faint. It was the purest, worst, most concentrated, extremely pungent ammonia smell you could think of. I had never smelled anything like that in my career at that point. If wine ages well and is better with time, this ammonia smell did the exact opposite, and it was somewhere worse than anything you could think of. The smell stuck to us too on our skin. For about a week no matter how hard I scrubbed, I can still smell it if I think about it. The texture of the body didn't help either, it was so slippery and wet that flecks of the ammonia fluid splashed onto my skin. The long gloves went up to my forearm. Not all the way to my scrubs. It was the worst autopsy of my life. It took about 3 hours because we kept having to take breaks and it was a difficult body to work on due to how fragile it was. It beat out everything else I saw. From the crazy accident fatalities, the interesting suicides, to even the person who had half their face eaten by rats and half their body covered in a sea of maggots and insects. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Also, RIP inbox. Pun intended. Edit 2. HVAC. Not heaper. I don't clean them for a living but had to clean a few apartments when my uncle managed an apartment complex. We had one tenant OD on heroin. 
He sat there for roughly three weeks before anyone noticed the smell. They took his body and left it to us to clean up. The dude vomited on the ceiling. There were little dry droplets of vomit all over the ceiling right above where he died and to top it off he basically liquefied and left a puddle of gut juices on the concrete foundation underneath the carpet. I thought that it was left to a professional team. But I guess it's optional and if you don't want to pay for it, you can scoop the brains and blood up yourself. Okay, here is another story that will always stick out. The entire residence was absolutely tossed, as if someone was looking for something. However, this wouldn't end up being a typical robbery turned homicide. This was about to be way more bizarre. We get the man into the bag so crime scene can take their photos. In the nearby toilet, we discover even more blood, possibly up to at least a third of this gentleman's entire volume of blood in the john. It was just around that exact moment where another patrol officer was perusing around the residence when he started to find random objects covered in fecal matter. Eventually, he found more objects with a mix of fecal matter and blood. It then hit us just exactly what we were dealing with. Extreme violent sodomy with foreign objects. Most of the objects were reasonable I suppose. Smaller objects resembling the phallic shape. TV remotes. Things of that like. Well. Three of the objects stuck out that were discovered are what make this story. The first was a broom. Sure you think. Kinda skinny. Right? Can't be that bad. Well. It was the depth up the grip of it that we were concerned about. This man definitely had his bowel perforated by how deep this thing went. The second object of note was a baseball bat. The contact end of it. Again. Pretty deep. But significantly wider in girth. Final and most standout of the objects was a guitar. A really nice Stratocaster 2. The tuning end of a guitar. The tuning knobs were all covered in a thick paste of fecal matter and blood. This man had been sodomized to death. At autopsy, the findings were obvious. However, what I had to do was something I'll never forget. After the primary evisceration was complete, the doctor wanted to completely excise the rectum. So I had to don a chainmail glove and, after rolling this poor guy onto his side, press inside his abdominal cavity to press his rectum out towards his anus to the doctor could pull it taut enough to cut out. After she had his guy's rectum out, which resembled one of those jelly filled toys that when you hold them they kinda fall inside themselves and through your hands. My ATS 90s baby friends should recall these guys. We then cut lengthwise up it to unfold the rectal tissue into a large rectangle to see the extent of the internal lacerations. Needless to say, deep, extensive, and humorous. The assailants have been apprehended. So that's the story about how I had to cut out a guy's butthole. For science, medicine, and law. TL. DR. Man is murdered from being sodomized with the tuning end of a guitar. The people responsible have been caught. Edit. Thank you very much to whoever awarded me the platinum medal. It is a travesty that I had to acquire such a thing from sharing such a grotesque story. And I will see to it that my currency coins. Sorry kinda new to Reddit honestly. Not too sure how this whole thing works. Are given out to equally endearing folk sharing their experiences with the internet. Edit. Thank you very much for the silver and gold. Final edit. It appears I have actually mixed two different former cases into one. I have redacted any details that were not related to the guitar case. In that job, a lot of cases tend to blend together. Especially when they're extremely similar. It was a while ago so I got some of the specifics wrong. The post now only contains bits of the story that again, are relevant to the guitar case. And all information contained within this post can be found publicly if you look hard enough. So, I work in healthcare. Crazy stuff comes in all the time. One time a woman came in who was shot in the V. She was dirty. In only a bra. I thought she was a prostitute tossed from a car. Turns out she was drinking with her BF and another guy. She and the BF got into a fight. Like. Serious fight. The BF starts choking her out. So the friend runs upstairs. Grabs a gun. And tries to shoot out the legs of the BF. Well. He missed and shot her instead. Took a bit of explaining to clear that up. Edit. I forgot to mention. The lady did fine considering. I don't know all of the legal consequences. Or how all of that worked out. I used to work in forensics picking up decedents as well as assisting the medical examiner in conduction of the autopsy. Not necessarily cleaning up the scene but. 
I've seen a guy who, during some kind of psychotic break, completely castrated his entire package. He then proceeded to stuff the entire package into his mouth and down his throat. He then slit his own throat, did all of this with a cheap kitchen knife in his shower, cause, exsanguination complicating transverse carotid and jugular severance, manner, suicide. Edit, just want to address anyone who is asking about it potentially being a homicide and give a little bit more background info. I was reluctant at first to give out too much detail, but here is what I'll offer. There was a call to a section 8 development about a man down the hall acting extremely erratically. He had no known history of drug abuse and no diagnosed psychiatric illnesses. His mother, whom he lived with, as well as many of the neighbors, called 911 multiple times and first responders were allegedly taking their sweet time getting to the scene. He lured his mother out into the hallway and then ran back into the apartment alone and locked the door behind him. He then ran to the kitchen, grabbed the knife, went and turned the shower on, and did the deed. He was picked up by Ems and brought to a local hospital where he was pronounced DOA due to his injuries. No preliminary toxicology was conducted by the hospital. His remains were then picked up by us for examination. Unfortunately for the conclusion of the story, this happened on one of my last days of work after I already put in my two weeks notice. Us. I don't have access to the post-mortem toxicology report to find out why he did it. If the tox is negative for illicit substances, we may and will likely never know why he actually did it. My personal hypothesis was that he suffered from some form of developmental disorder and combined with a latent psychiatric illness of some sort, compounded with an unresolved body gender dysmorphia complex, was unable to cope with his feelings and broke. User team op. Propane nat gas explosion. Guy's arm was holding onto a ladder going up a holding tank. No body. No anything. Just an arm. Preemptive edit. It was his left arm. I was at this house cleaning up a suicide. It was a beautiful young woman in her 20s who had killed herself with her prescribed antidepressant. The investigators had left so it was just me and my partner there. We just had to put her in a body bag and take her to the morgue. I went out to the ambulance to get the body bag stretcher, walk back in the house to see my partner raping the girl's corpse. The strangest part is that he seemed like a totally normal dude. I would have even said we were friends. He's in prison now. Craziest did I ever hear as an EMT in training was a cops and EMTs responding to a GSW. Gunshot wound. Cops where I live have to clear the scene first before medical personnel can go in. They find the guy, head completely missing from the lower mandible upward. Two boys scared itless hiding under their beds after witnessing him blow his head off with a 12 gauge. Medics where I live are legally required to check for a pulse. As one does and the other, they are tandem, calls it in. Said dead body stands up and sits back down, then does it two more times. The last one puts its hands out like Frankenstein. Keep in mind there is nothing from the jawline up. The second officer said if he does it one more time he is shooting him. As morbid as it is. I laughed at that part. Edit. Whoever golded me. Thank you but anyone further please donate it. I suggest Justin Wren's fight for the forgotten organization or any fund for the fires in CA. A friend of mine is a firefighter and he told me about a scene of a wreck he showed up to. When he arrived there was a corvette smashed under a trailer of an 18 wheeler. When they finally pulled the two apart. The driver of the Corvette's body was was intact in the front seat with cell phone in hand. Meanwhile his head was in the back seat. Turns out he had been going at least 70 miles per hour while texting and didn't realize there was a red light and rammed into the back of an 18 wheeler. Just trying to do my part to get actual crime cleaners here but I'm a medic so similar I guess. One time we found this guy dead in his home in the corner of the living room tucked around the couch. Ass up no cloths on. Literal coffee ground looking it spread everywhere across the house, on the floors, furniture, walls, everywhere, along with mass amounts of liquor bottles and glass everywhere. He had massive GI issues along with drinking himself to death. Don't know what was worse. The smell or the scene. I'm not a crime SCE in Claire Biat. A friend of mine works as a detective for homicides and vice. Sometimes the two combine. Usually she doesn't talk about work ever but she was clearly suffering from this scene she described the following 
Imagine a small apartment, one bedroom, one separate kitchen, a small living room, small bathroom, tiny toilet. You enter the small hallway and you find a trail of blood. You follow the trail and at the end of the trail is someone hanging out of the living room window with half her head blown off. She apparently tried to commit suicide by shooting herself. It didn't stick and she decided to jump out of her window but died before she could fall down. You look around and enter the kitchen. There's a baby in the kitchen. The baby is no longer alive because it's face down in the sink full of clear water. The child was drowned. Later they found out the mother did it. You keep exploring the scene. In the bedroom her other two children were found. They were older. 4 and 7 years old. Boy and girl. They apparently fled from their mother after she killed the baby. The mother came after them with a knife. There was a lot of blood. Each kid had over 30 stab wounds. It was an otherwise normal family of 5. Stay at home mother. Working father. Talented sporty boy. Very smart girl. And a few months old baby girl. So where is the father? Is he a potential suspect? Can we find anyone who knows where he is? Let's tag and bag the scene. Consider him suspect for now. Put a warrant out for his arrest. Or whatever kind of come with us innocent until proven guilty person arrest there is. Then the father steps out of the elevator outside the front door of his apartment. He looks at the open door with brankers rolling out with covered bodies of his children and wife. He looks at the police presence and detectives in white suits. The hysterically crying man is having a meltdown of astronomical proportions. And my friend was there to see it all unfold in front of her eyes in the span of one afternoon. The guy was innocent. The timeline was something like this. The mother had not slept in days because of the baby crying. Out of pure frustration she drowned the baby. Her other children saw her do it. She panicked and killed the other children. She panicked even more and tried to blow her own head off. But that didn't immediately work so she tried to jump down the windows to kill herself. Blood loss made her pass out and she died hanging from the window where she was spotted by a neighbor who called the cops. The cops opened the door. Saw it wasn't their type of scene. My friend has seen suicides of all kinds. She's seen the results of two young kids committing suicide by train. She's seen all types of hangings. She's seen all types of necrosis. She's seen it all. But not a happy family going from heaven to the deepest depths of hell in the span of one afternoon. She's been on paid leave for a few weeks now. It was simply too much. I have no idea how people can do that job for several decades. My friend wasn't an official crime scene cleaner. But he drove a tow truck and they often had to deal with some gruesome aftermath. The worst one was a man we had both met before. Recently married. Baby on the way. Seemed happy enough. They found his car parked down in a secluded spot by the lake off a major highway at one of his favorite fishing spots. He had shot himself in the head and was found days later when the car was reported as suspicious to the police. I happened to be riding with my friend that day, chilling and helping him unlock cars and bring people gas and whatnot. We got a police call, usually just towing a car from an accident or because the driver is drunk. Because of the suicide's location and the proximity to heavy traffic. They had us tow the vehicle to our lot, which was nearby, in order to wait for the coroner and better get him out. So that we found ourselves towing a vehicle with the dead body of someone we knew in the driver's seat. It was surreal. The worst part was the next day when his pregnant wife wanted to get items out of the car. She asked for his favorite hat. He had been wearing it when he shot himself and it had blood all over it and a bullet hole through the top. The shop said they didn't see it and she couldn't go to the car yet. They told her they would call her if they find it and spent the rest of the day trying to decide what to do. Since the hat looked new, she said he had just gotten it earlier that month for his birthday. They located a brand new one at the local mall and a few shop techs wore it around for a couple days to try to make it look used. They then gave her that hat instead and said they found it in the glove box or something. It just didn't seem right to give her a bloody token of her husband's recent suicide. She was so happy they had found it. Truly heartbreaking. My friend was a bit messed up for a while after that. It really made him more angry than anything. He kept going on about how selfish suicide is. I never told him I had considered it as a teenager. If I had had access to a gun, that might have been me in that car. You just never know what people are dealing with. I hope the wife is doing fine now. Edit. If his wife is reading this, 
I hope you understand that switching the hat came from a place of love and concern. Though they barely knew you. They didn't want to put you through more trauma, but still wanted you to have the closure you deserved. I hope you see the hat as a token of how much strangers cared for you and wanted the best for you. I also wish with all my heart that you are doing well. For anyone going through hell right now and feel alone. I care. I know it's hard and exhausting. But I believe in you. Please reach out to the people you care about. If you don't feel like you can do that. Please message me. I am happy to listen and do what I can to help. You're an incredibly strong person and you deserve a life of happiness and love. Don't know if this counts as a crime scene. But at my work we had to pick teeth out of a rock garden after a guy blew his head off with a shotgun. Great question. I looked through some other threads for relevant responses and found a few. You laughing with myself said, here, more than I was at a scene recently where someone jumped off a balcony onto the street below. The balconies of the second and third floors extend out further than the others. The person left pieces of themselves on the third floor and the rest of them continue down to the second floor. More than another one that I attended a few years ago was a suicide attempt in a nursing home. A lady cut both of her wrist and waited to die. The only problem was that the wounds were too superficial. She had a bit of time to kill. So she made herself a smoothie, watched some TV, went to the bathroom. Basically just going about her normal day. She eventually changed her mind and called for help. U55 said, Here, more than the company I work for doesn't usually clean up crime scenes. But it's something my boss has been trying to get into for a while. We have gone and done a couple of bids. Usually when we show up the crime scene is over a week old. Sometimes too. This one in particular. A man murdered his girlfriend and confessed the next day. So it was about 3 or 4 days old. This man stabbed his girlfriend 56 times throughout the home while she was trying to get away. He then scalped her in the bathroom. There was blood and hair everywhere. That's not even the most ducked up part. After she was dead. He cut off her boob and cooked it in a frying pan. Drugs were involved. Deleted. Said, here, more than as a fire department chaplain. Part of my job was clearing the trauma from the room. So I think I count. More than I've cleaned some real messes. Shotgun suicides. Homicides. But most disturbing for me was a car accident where an infant died. Broke his neck I think. Nobody else was too seriously injured. Crying that infant from the arms of his mother is a moment seared into my brain forever. I can put corpses on gurneys all day long. Pick skull fragments out of a wall. Or collect limbs from the side of a freeway no problem. But the wails of the mom. Her desperate rocking and tight grip on her child. And the smell and look and feel of death on a person who hadn't even yet experienced life. It was wrong. It just felt wrong on the most primal level for me. Oh I have a story about someone who launched their entrails over a bathroom that s probably. 81 square feet. I clean up biohazard material. Dead bodies for my company on occasion because I'm one of the only two that's certified. My and my co-worker went into a house to clean a body but the boss failed to mention they had been dead for two weeks. Okay, whatever I can deal with that. We walked to the house and not only could you smell it from the start of the driveway, but all the windows were black. Okay, this dude had blackout curtains I understand that. We suited up and went into the house, which was relatively clean given the circumstances. We knew he died in the bathroom so we made our way upstairs and followed the flies. So, you know how flies swarm decaying things? Yeah it wasn't blackout curtains in the bathroom. The windows were caked in so many flies that sunlight couldn't come in. My boss also failed to mention he died in the bathtub. You hear about bloating and blah 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 but do you know what happens when a body sits in a bathtub for two weeks and soaks up all that water? It explodes. The entrails and remains of this. Soup was all over the taking. The walls. The door. It was everywhere. There was no water in the bathtub just this sickly pink colored stew. That was the most disgusting cleanup I've done by far. I can't even imagine what it sounded like when that happened. Edit. I love Reddit. Someone reposted my story and got 600